In today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to create this particular texture and set it up in this particular type of a scene. The texture that we'll learn how to create can be used in various different situations. So it's actually going to be a fairly useful tutorial. With that, let's actually figure out how we can create this texture. To start off in our default scene, we'll go ahead and tap X to delete the default cube. Now we'll press Shift A and search for a plane, which is going to be the base on which we apply our texture. Let's scale this up by something like five units. And of course you could scale it down on the X axis or scale it up only on the Y axis. However, I'm going to have all of that covered up. So I'll keep it just like this. Now that I have that set to actually see changes to the texture, we'll go ahead and set up our defaults. We'll bring our cursor to this top right and switch our viewport shading to rendered. We'll select the default light and tap X to delete it. Then we'll go ahead and select our plane, go to the material properties and we'll select the default material. Then we'll change the name to maybe sci-fi panels or anything that you feel like. And then we're going to go all the way down to the settings and change the blend mode from opaque to alpha blend. Similarly, you can switch off shadows by changing it from opaque to none and that should be enough to set up your material. Now we can press seven on our numpad to go into the top view so that we can actually see what we create. Now to actually give it a material, we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and then change this from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. Then we'll tap N to remove the side panel. And as long as you have the plane selected, you should see the material nodes over here. If you can't see them, make sure that the object is selected and then tap A to select everything and period on your numpad to centralize the nodes. Now we don't need the principal to be SDF. So let's select it, tap X to delete it and then press shift A and search for two different shaders. The first one is going to be a transparent BSDF and the second one is going to be an emission BSDF. So once we have both of those set up, we have to combine these two together. To combine them, we're gonna press Shift A and search for a mix shader and we're going to connect the emission to the top socket and the transparent to the bottom socket. Now we can take this output and plug it into the material output and we should have a mix between the emission and the transparent. We're gonna control this factor using another texture and that's going to be the Voronoi texture. So let's press shift it and search for a Voronoi texture and now we're going to change this from Euclidean to Chebyshev so that we get squares. Let's initially take the distance and plug that into the factor to see what we have and you can see how we start getting these little square like patterns. To make it more prominent we'll press shift A and search for a color ramp node and plug that in after the Voronoi texture and we can just crunch in the black and crunch in the white. Similarly I actually want to add in another stop and to add in another stop you can control click or you can press this plus button. Now that gives me another white stop over here but let's go ahead and give it another stop over here by control clicking and this time this last stop that we just created will be changed to a black color. Now I think this sort of a distribution is good however you'll see why we did this in a while. The next step that we need to do is actually get this to have more lines present in between. And that's actually very simple to do. All we do is take this Voronoi texture and feed that into another Voronoi texture. So let's press Shift D to duplicate it and plug that in right over there. Now that we have this, you get all of these nice lines. And if you want to see something cool that we do with this sort of a texture, you can check out this particular video over here. It's one of my earlier videos, but I still think it has a lot of value. Once you're done with that, the difference that we're going to do is instead of just using this, we're going to convert this to a crackle texture. To get the crackle texture, we're gonna take this Voronoi texture and press Shift D to duplicate it and then subtract these two by moving a bit on the fourth dimension. So for that, we're gonna have to change both of these from 3D to 4D. And we similarly, we're actually gonna change this Voronoi texture to 4D as well so that we can play around with the W later on. But once we have this, let's search for a math node and then subtract out this Voronoi texture from this Voronoi texture and use this output as the input to the third Voronoi texture. Now we just change the W for one of them and you can see how we get these really nice crackle like effects and this looks really cool. If you want a video where we've used this crackle texture you can check out this video over here. Now to make this more liney what we're going to do is we're going to increase this scale over here and you'll be able to get so many more lines which I think looks much more sci-fi. Now that we have these you can see that by changing around the W socket of the other one we do get this continuous changing pattern and you could just have this change as an animation all by itself but that's not exactly what we're going to be doing today. What we're going to do is use this as the side panels or the roof based on your preference or some sort of a passageway. But before we do that, let's go ahead and just change the emission colors. So let's make we make this a pinkish color, reddish color, orangish color. It's really up to you. For the tutorial purposes, maybe I'll keep it at this sort of an orange and then increase the strength 
from one to maybe something like five. Now we should get some nice bloom, but we don't get that because we have to go to our render properties and switch on bloom from here. Apart from that, we can also switch on screen space reflections. And now this is what we get. Let's go ahead and give something for it to reflect on. So let's press shift A and search for a mesh plane or just type in plane and then scale this up by five units as well. Let's press G Z to just bring it down by a little bit and give it a new material by going to the material properties and pressing this new button. Let's go ahead and increase the metallic all the way to one and reduce the roughness down to something like 0.2. Now there should be really nice reflections from this panel onto this floor. Let's press GZ to move it around a bit. And if you're unable to see nice reflections, make sure that you have the sci-fi panel material selected. Go all the way down and change it from alpha blend to alpha hash. That way, you'll definitely be able to see reflections. Now that you have this sort of a nice reflective material set up, you can go ahead and work with the floor and maybe play around with the roughness a bit as well. But for now, I'll just leave it like this. Let's select both of them and press R Y 90 to just convert it to a standing structure like that. And then I'll press G X and I'll move it by maybe minus three units. Similarly, I want one on the right hand side. So I'll press shift D for both of them and I'll change the orientation axis to the 3D cursor and I'll press R Z 180 and that should move it to the other side like that. Now let's create another floor. So plane search for a plane and then press S and scale this up maybe five units and that is now our floor. We can always move the floor down so let's move the floor down on the Z axis by maybe one unit and to make it move down we're gonna tap minus so that it becomes minus one unit. Similarly we will require a ceiling so let's press shift D Z and maybe lift it up by four units. So now that we have that selected Let's go ahead and press shift and select all of these different objects so that we can put all of them into a specific collection. Once you have all the objects selected, press M and select new collection and we can name this as objects. Now that you have that created, you can create instances of this object by pressing shift A collection instance and just choose objects. Now we'll press G Y followed by the length that it has to move for it to be perfectly looping, which would be 10 units in my case, because I scaled up a two by two plane by five, which means it's 10 units long. Now I can do the exact same thing again by pressing shift A collection instance objects. And then this time G Y followed by 20 units. And that should be good enough. Now that we have this created, you can always fine tune how much of these areas you want by playing around with this color ramp. As you can see, by bringing in more white, more of this particular object becomes transparent and you get just a few lines. On the other hand, by bringing in the black, you're going to have more of it opaque and you're going to get a much brighter scene. So it's really up to you and what your personal preferences are, but this is what I'll leave it as for now. Next, I'll select my camera and press Alt G to clear its location, Alt R to clear its rotation, and I'll press R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then I'll press zero to go into my camera view and I'll press G Y to just bring it back by five units. So I'll press minus five and that should bring it to the absolute start of my entire loop, as you can see right over there. Now that I have this done, I can go ahead and increase the actual field of view of my camera. And for that, in my camera settings, I'll have to change the focal length down to something like 18. And now I get a much wider field of view. Apart from that, I'll go to my viewport display and I'll change my pass part two all the way to one. Now, the reason I moved this bottom plane down by only one unit and I moved the top one up by four units is so that we get it such that the camera is essentially one third of the way to the top. However, you could always position your camera in any way that you feel suits your scene. Now let's go ahead and just give this plane on the floor a little bit more of a texture. So let's press this plus button to create a new material. And I'm gonna rename this material to floor and I'm gonna make it completely metallic so that there's really nice reflections. However, for the roughness, I'm going to go ahead and search for a noise texture and a color ramp. So let's press shift A, search for a color ramp, and then plug the color into the factor of the color ramp, and then take the color output and plug that into the roughness of the principled PSDF. Now I'm just gonna increase the roughness by changing the detail from two to something like five and increasing the roughness up to something like 0 0.8. And then I'll just bring this black in quite a bit and bring this white in quite a bit as well to make it more contrasty. Now. That might be good enough. You can play around with this a little bit, but one thing that I want to do is change this value from zero to a value of 0 0.1 so that it's not completely reflective. Similarly, this white, I want to change it from a value of one to a value of 0 0.8 so that it's never completely non-reflective. So I think that looks good enough and that's what I'll leave it for as of now. For the ceiling, I want this to be metallic, which was 
the same thing as the material that I used behind these panels. So I'll just select the material from there. Now that looks really reflective. I think that looks nice. Let's keep it as is. But in case I do want to play around with the roughness, I can actually just create its own material by duplicating that and then changing the roughness from 0.2 to maybe 0.3 or you can reduce it if you want. But I think it was fine at 0.2 itself. Now that we have that set up, I want to go ahead and actually animate this particular structure to move. Now, in this situation, we have both the right hand side and the left hand side completely independent of each other, but I want all of them to move based on some specific object. So, what I'm going to do is for the Voronoi texture, I'm going to add in some mapping coordinates. So, let's search for a texture coordinate node. And for the actual object over here, I'm going to add in an empty. So, let's go back to our original collection, press Shift A, and search for an empty plane axis. And in order to actually see it, you can go ahead and switch on overlay once again now you can see you have your empty over here so with our sci-fi panel selected for the object we can choose that empty that we just created now we can take the object and plug it into the vector for both Voronoi textures now of course that will change the scale but you don't have to worry about that because you can then just select the empty and scale it up to whatever size you want so maybe I'm gonna scale it up by something like five units and that looks good enough. Now I want this particular pattern to repeat after every let's say 25 units. So in order to do that back in our texture coordinates for the sci-fi panel we can add in a modulo function. So to do that I want that modulo function to go into both the Voronoi textures. So with the node wrangler enabled I can press shift right click and just drag between these to create a new junction point over there. Now let's press shift a and search for a vector math node and we're going to switch this vector math node from add to modulo once it's set to modulo remember modulo is going to give us the remainder after division so if we were to set this to something like five every time vector reaches five it's going to repeat itself so let's go ahead and change this from zero to something like five and remember we also took this empty and scaled it up by five times so in our texture coordinates it's not going to repeat every five units but every 25 units it's essentially five into the scale of this empty so now we can take this empty and just press gy and see that by moving the empty we're actually able to move the texture as well and if we were to move it by a value of minus 25 we should get the exact same pattern as we had when the empty was present in its original location you just press ctrl z we can see that the shape did not quite match up we have to figure out why and the reason is because this modulo function is only going to work on the positive coordinates so our empty starts over here so zero is present somewhere around over there. So as we move this back by 25 units, or we move the empty back by 25 units, the first 25 units might not match up, but the second 25 units will. So right now, if we take the position and keep it at minus 25, you can see that you have some particular shapes over here. Now, if we were to press G, Y minus 25 again, we're left with the exact same shape, which is exactly what we were looking for. So let's press control Z. And now if we take a look at our empty, you can see that our empty is present at a value of minus 25 on the y axis. So to actually keyframe the animation, we can go ahead and set our output properties. We'll change the resolution to 200%. And remember, I keep this at 200% and 60 FPS so that you get a 4K 60 FPS animation. If you want to download the 4K 60 FPS animation, you can go ahead and download that from either my Patreon, where you can buy the blend file along with the material and as many animations as were created for this at the highest resolution as a single product from the shop. Or you can go ahead and subscribe to our monthly tiers where you'll get every single animation that I create. Off late, I haven't been able to post regularly, but I will be posting regularly from now onwards. So I really do hope that all of that helps you out quite a bit. I'm going to keep the end frame at 300 so that it's a five second long animation. Output folder can be wherever you want it to be. File format, I'm going to choose FFmpeg video with the encoding change from Matroska to MPEG-4 and an output quality of Perceptree lossless. Then I'm going to press the back arrow to go to frame 0 and with the empty selected, I'll go ahead and tap I and choose location. Then on frame 300, which is the last frame, I'm going to go ahead and press G, Y, minus 25 so that it moves by 25 units once again. I'll tap enter and tap I and choose location. Now I'll come down here and tap T and choose linear and that way we should get a smooth loop as it goes from this section to the other. Now we have to go ahead and figure out how we're going to get this entire background to fade into the distance. So we'll go to our world properties or we'll change this from object to world and again if you can't see the nodes tap A followed by period to centralize the nodes. We'll change the background color all the way to black 
and we'll give this area some sort of a volume. For that, we'll press Shift A, search for a volume scatter node and plug that into the volume of the world output. Now we can reduce the density down to something like 0.1 and then just slowly increase it until that last bit is faded out. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use a principled volume node. I'm going to plug that in and I'm going to change the color all the way to a bright white, but I'll reduce the density down to maybe 0.2 and I'm actually going to give it a little bit of emission. So let's change the emission to 0.2 one and I'll change the emission color to the same orangish color so something like that now the density is still too high so let's change that down to 0.1 and the emission strength is also too high so let's change that to 0.01 and that looks very good I think that I want this to actually go on for just a little bit longer so I'll go ahead and just create another instance so let's select this press alt D and then press Y followed by 10 and then press enter and now I can just shift R to repeat that process as many times as required if I switch off overlays this is what it looks like and I think that looks pretty good if you were to play the animation the entire thing would repeat now that might work just as is if you wanted to but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a gradient to the density so that this area remains far brighter than it is right now. To do that, we can search for a gradient texture and we can go ahead and plug this into the density of the principled volume. Now let's press Shift A and search for a color ramp node. Plug that in after the color so that we can actually make sure that instead of being a complete white, it ends up getting a maximum value of maybe 0.1. Then let's go ahead and just rotate this about the Z axis. So let's press Control T, add in the texture coordinate and mapping nodes and we'll switch from generated to object. For the object, we can go ahead and just select select our camera and that way everything's happening from the perspective of the camera. So now let's just rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees because I believe that's how the camera would work and then just move it along the X axis till you get the exact type of lighting that you were looking for. Now I currently have this set up opposite so instead of rotating it on the Y axis by positive 90 I'm going to rotate it by a negative 90. Now you can see that we do have quite a bit of density out over there and we have quite a bit of brightness nearby our camera if we just fine tune that position. So I think something like that looks great and hopefully it does fit out completely into the distance but I don't think it's fading out completely so I'm just going to increase the density by a little bit by changing this value from 0.1 to maybe 0.2 and now you can clearly see how it fades out completely and that looks great over there. So we have really bright sides over here and a complete fade out over there but even in that fade out there is a little bit of light that is being passed through. Maybe we can change that to like 0.3 and yeah that's even brighter now. So it's really up to you. And I think this currently looks a little too yellow. So I might change around the colors a bit till I get something that I like. But that's essentially all there is to create this animation. All you have to do after this is press render animation. However, before you do that, in case you want to add in just a little bit more of change or differences in brightness, you can play around with the W value of this Voronoi texture over here. That way you can clearly see how certain areas light up and certain areas go back down, which is quite a cool animation by itself. So instead of having any motion, you could have just this, but I think the motion plus this gives quite a cool effect. To make this looping, you're gonna have to go to frame zero and just hover over the W value at whatever you want. So maybe we can start off at zero and just tap I and then on frame 300 you have to make sure that it's at zero itself so hover over it and tap I. Now at around frame 150, we'll change this value from zero to maybe something like one or even lesser. It's really up to you. But once you have that done, tap I and now you should have three keyframes. Make sure that you change the interpolation to linear. And then when you play the animation, you should have some motion in that as well. Now my playback is very slow and laggy. So I'll change from play every frame to frame dropping. Get a realistic idea of how fast this is moving. Now I might play around with that, but until then, the only thing left to do is render out the animation. I hope this was an interesting tutorial and you learned something something from. I tried to keep it fairly simple, but I do think the tutorial ended up becoming a little longer than I anticipated. I will try my best to post videos every single day. So until the next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.